In this video, we're going to discuss the gibbs duhem equation. We're gonna go through the derivation, uh, and it's actually a very simple derivation that has some pretty powerful consequences uh, for our partial molar quantities that we've been talking about in the last few videos. So to simplify this, we're going to just deal with a two component system. So let's say we have a two component system that consists of uh, component A and component B, All right? So two component system, uh, two component systems tend to be very important in chemistry because a lot of chemistry is done in solution where you can imagine that system as a two component system of your solute and your solvent, right? So we tend to have these uh, binary mixtures that are really important in chemistry and being able to uh, classify their thermodynamics uh, very exactly is, is really important to us um, in thermochemistry. So let's just deal with the two component mixture. If we have a two component mixture, we saw in the last video that we can actually express its total Gibbs free energy in the following way, where we'll have in a mu a, where mu is your chemical potential plus in B mu B. Right now, we know that this is if we're mixing these things together, then the number of moles of each component is constantly changing. So if we want to look at the change in Gibbs free energy, right, we've looked at some expressions for DG. But what I want to do is introduce a new expression for DG. And, and we just get it from looking at this expression for the total Gibbs energy. Right. We know that we can express it in this fashion. We also know that the number of moles depends on the chemical potential and the chemical potential likewise depends on the number of moles, right? So knowing that we can just write out a general product rule type differential by doing the product rule on each of these two terms, right? So first term we could have here would be in a D mu a plus uh, mu a DNA, right? Just general product rule, take the derivative of one, leave the other alone and add the opposite. Right, so uh, same thing here, we end up with the same terms for component B, right, DNB, uh, NB, D mu B, plus mu B, DNB. Right, so this is just using, just using product rule, right, we get this general expression for DG. Right, now we also know that we can obtain another expression for DG, right? We know that for a two component system, if everything's changing, right, DG is gonna be equal to VDP minus SDT plus mu A DNA plus mu B, oops, mu B DNB, right? And if we hold our natural variables constant here, right? So hold temperature and pressure constant, then we end up with this expression, just like we looked at in the previous video talking about the partial molar Gibbs energy. Right, so we end up with this expression. Well, what we have here now are two different expressions for DG, right? So when we have two expressions that are equal to the same quantity, you know, what we can always do is at is equal them, uh, equate them, right? So we can set these two equal to each other. And this is where we get the derivation of the Gibbs Duhem equation, right? So if we set these two equal, right? So setting this guy equal to this guy, right? Then we end up with the following. We get mu A DNA plus mu B DNB is equal to this expression for DG. So we'll have Na d mu a plus mu a DNA plus Nb d mu b plus mu b DNB. Okay, so now looking at this guy, Right, looking at both sides, we get some cancellation on both sides. If we were to bring these terms over, right, this term cancels with that one, and this term for A uh, cancels with this one as well. So what we're left with, right, so now this side is just zero, and then so you just end up with Na D mu A 
plus NB D mu B, right? So for a two component system, this is the Gibbs Duham equation. Obviously we can extend this to any components, any number of components, right? So in general, we can write the Gibbs Duham equation as the sum So we can write this as the sum over all components I of the number of moles of I d mu I, right? Again, this is at constant temperature and pressure, right? That's going to be equal to zero, right? So this is the general expression of the Gibbs Duham equation, right? Now, um, I really want to kind of stick with this two component system for just a second and let's re-express this in the following way. Let's say that we wanted to isolate uh, a differential for the chemical potential, right, of one of these components. Let's say we wanted to isolate it for component B, right? Doing the algebra, we end up with the following expression, in A over in B d mu A, right? Now, why is this important? Well, like I said before, binary mixtures, two component mixtures, these are very important mixtures in chemistry because of the importance of solution chemistry, right? The fact that we can we have a very important two component system and a solution with solute and and solvent, right? So what this does is it gives us a relationship between the chemical potential of the change in chemical potential of one component to the other, right? And, and importantly, this ratio here, right? So this ratio really dictates how big that change is actually going to be, right? You can imagine that when this is, you know, rather small, right? Um, that's going to be a large change uh, of, the, of one potential on the next, right? So this ratio is going to determine, right? how much of a change this has, right? When this, when this guy is very large, there's going to be a large change, right? Even for a small change in A, there's going to be a large change in B, right? Whereas when this is smaller, that change will be nullified a bit, right? So this ratio kind of dictates that change. And this ratio between the two components is, is going to be very important in being able to determine how big of an effect the chemical potential of one component is going to have on another. Now, this the, the importance of the gibbs duham relationship doesn't just stop at the chemical potential. You can derive this relationship for any partial molar quantity, right? So we talked about, you know, partial molar internal energy, enthalpy, even partial molar volume um, has this same gibbs duham type relationship for multi-component systems and the same importance for binary systems. So let's look at an example to kind of show you how this works, right? So right here, I've got the kind of gibbs duham relationship for partial molar volume. Right, so this will be for partial molar volume, but this is the exact same gibbs duham type relationship, right? Where um, the change in the partial molar volume of B is dependent on the partial molar volume of A, uh, given this ratio. And what I've done here is sketch a plot where you can see the changing of the mole fraction of B um, on the x-axis and the two y-axes are the partial molar volume for B and A respectively. So I modeled this after a curve of a, a mixture of ethanol and water, right? So this is going to look different depending on what the components of your mixture are. Uh, in this case, B is ethanol and A is water. Right, so looking at the plot, right, you can see that in this region where the mole fraction of ethanol is low, right, which means that this denominator would be very low, meaning that this ratio would be very large, right? You can see that even a small change um, in the partial molar volume of A has a huge effect on the partial molar volume of B. Whereas when you start to get out to this region where that ratio 
is more even, you know, like where you're you're not dominated by uh, either the partial molar volume of, of ethanol or water, right? You start to see less of an effect, right? So when this ratio is really, uh, when this number, this ratio is really large, there's gonna be a very large effect of any change in the partial molar volume of A on B versus when that ratio starts to get smaller and smaller, right? As, as you start to have the number of moles of B dominate this ratio, there's less of an effect. It almost flattens out to a flat line, right? So, um, so this Gibbs-Duhem relationship, even though it's very general for any multi-component system, it's going to be very important when we start to look at binary mixtures for this exact reason. We can derive this relationship for any of our partial molar quantities um, based on the Gibbs-Duhem expression.